So that was the turn lane. This would be really, Ooh, that was close. Like right now, after we pass this truck, yeah, okay, signal. There you go. I was looking down at the phone to see the reply and just that little quick look down, it gave me the alert. Yes, yeah, so this lane's ending, so I would signal right now and move over. Perfect, the car does exactly that. There's no road lines, there's no markings, there's just cones and chaos and the car handles it totally fine. And auto park in this version has definitely got a lot more smooth. It can kind of do everything in one motion. So we'll see what it does here. It's a little close to this curb. All right guys, this is another FSD 12.5.6.3 video. I'm just heading to meet up with somebody and then go see a client afterwards. Um, got another camera angle, let me know what you think about it. And uh, I'm gonna start the drive. We have a biker just here in front of us and a bit of traffic. So right away, I will say the way that FSD handles pedestrians and bikers, especially on just a road like this, I wish that it would give more um, room so we'll see what it does here like right now after we pass this truck yeah okay signal it's actually really good great job here so that was done perfectly we waited signaled moved over so that was a great job okay good job at the stop sign here uh, my wife actually took the car this morning and was remarking this version of FSD is one that she really does like. Um, the critique she gave it, sorry, I'm just gonna wipe the screen here. The critique she did give it is that it's braking is still, um, she called it a little bit too late and a little bit too harsh in a lot of scenarios. So I'll definitely agree with her that um, FSD is a little bit late on braking sometimes. And then coming up to stop signs like this, like it's really smooth until the very last bit. And then it kind of feels, like it jitters when it doesn't need to. Um, like it is overall very smooth, but those are just the last little tweaks that I'm hoping version 13 does fix. And with that said, version 13 is out now. It's just to uh, early access testers. So I think there's honestly about like five people that are testing it right now. Um, so far from the videos that I've been seeing, it looks great. Like kind of all the issues that I talk about in these videos, it seems like version 13 has fixed and then and then some so everything that i was having problems with it seems to be resolved and then there's of course like a bunch of new features there's you can start um fsd from park now which it seems like a very small thing but it's just that one step further to a robo taxi experience so now rather than putting it in drive and pressing the button to start fsd um, if you have a destination put in there's just a button on your screen you press it and if it's required, FSD will reverse or it'll do a three point turn, whatever it needs to to get out of the position and then it'll start the drive for you. Um, and as well, in ideal circumstances, it will get to a destination and park. Um, that part of it does seem to be hit and miss. You know, there's been videos where it's backed into a supercharger perfectly fine or Dirty Tesla showed where it, he got to a GameStop and it backed into the spot. Um, him and his wife both you know shared a reaction video that it was like it's i think that that last little bit of the drive and having it be completed by the car makes the whole experience feel that much more impressive so uh i'm really excited to try it i'm desperately desperately trying to get into the early access program uh, i've reached out to tesla and a few people but it seems like it's a bit difficult understandably um Okay, I would go right here, but I think the car will probably wait because we have a pedestrian on our left, which is probably the like right thing to do because it would be overly aggressive. So now I would wait. Yeah, I guess I would wait. And then I'd go right now. Perfect. So that's the right thing to do. Um, we had a pedestrian. You might even have been able to see her on that camera. She was crossing the road. And uh, as a human driver, I'll admit that I probably would have gone and driven in front of her. But as a pedestrian, that is uncomfortable to have a car, you know, even if they're not going to hit you, come in front of you as you're crossing. So this isn't in a particularly busy area. I don't need to take the aggressive approach and drive in front of her. I can wait a few more seconds, give her the space and turn left. So that was a good job there.
Uh, really nice job here. We have uh, traffic's backing up quite a bit, but this right lane was a lot more open for sure. And so we got in the left lane, we're slowed down, and then the car put us over into the right lane to gain, like we were six or eight vehicles ahead. So really, really good job there. Like I love the kind of little decisions that makes the drive feel like you're actually, it's not overly robotic. Like it's, it's doing things to save time exactly like a human would. All right, so here we have a truck that wants to come in um, as well as this person was turning. Both of those kind of present and show a issue that I, I, I'm not actually sure how a full self-driving handles it. Like I don't know, he signaled and wanted in and we weren't really giving space. And I don't know if full self-driving recognizes signals and handles it contextually, like appropriately, or it would only be if he started actually coming into the lane if we would have given him space because Personally, I would have slowed down for the car that was turning and for the person that wanted to come in. Um, instead, we didn't really give him space and then we ended up kind of having to put on the brakes a little bit late there for the guy turning in front of us. Um, worked out fine, like we got through it, but I definitely would have rather taken the approach to you know, give, give space right away to avoid all that. Um, and something else, so there's version 13.2 is what's being tested right now. And this drive is 12.5.6.3. Um, there was, and it looks to be like a small rollout of a new version 12.5.6.4. Um, from what I can see, it just adds um, the ability for the car to send the audio from inside the cab back to Tesla for like diagnostic purposes. And I think that's gonna just be for them for handling um, emergency vehicles, like fire truck, police cars, um, ambulance, things like that. So I, I'm surprised to see that build coming out because I thought from, from this version, we would just go straight to 13.3, assuming everything went well. Um, like it's good to see them adding that feature and I love the idea of the vehicle being able to understand um, emergency vehicles. I'm just surprised that there is a point release that isn't just putting us on 13.3 right now. But if there is, if I do get that update and there is anything to be tested, I'll definitely go for a drive and see if I notice anything different. But there really isn't many people with it right now. And those with it haven't said there is any notable difference besides that very small change in the uh, options. Um, since it's December, unless it's the wrong thing, uh, I'll probably leave Santa mode on quite a bit while I'm doing the full self-driving. Um, it just displays cars as reindeers and your car as uh, Santa. And then people, I think, are elves. Um, you can enable this in the toy box in here somewhere. Santa. But if you... Um, press the voice command and just say ho 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 it'll enable it but without the like because there's normally if you do it through the toy box there's like a, a jingle a jingle that plays at the beginning and then every time you use the turn signals it does like a festive noise instead of the actual normal turn signals which it's cute the first time you use it but it's really hard to use that long term um, so if you want to have it on for fun but not be bothered by the noises, just uh, press the voice command and say ho ho ho. So good job with the car here, stopping to let this guy in. Um, and for a lot of this, I'm definitely going to fast forward because we're just in slow stop and go traffic. but. It is really nice to have full self-driving in situations like this because, you know, 
there's really nothing going on right now. Like for the last 10 minutes, I've just been stuck in this traffic. But rather than worrying about stopping and going and keeping pace to the vehicle in front of me, um, I'm literally just listening to a podcast and kind of like looking out, watching the road. It, it may not seem it, but until you daily drive with full self-driving, it just takes away so much that little fatigue and makes it, it it's easy. Like you're just hanging out here, you're just chilling in the car. Um, effectively a passenger with full control when necessary. But since we started this drive, I haven't done anything. Like I've just sat here in the cars and absolutely everything. So it's a, uh, it's very handy, even if it doesn't seem particularly stressful or complex to be doing this drive, it is still just nice to have something else drive for you. Okay, curious what's gonna happen here. I don't know if the lane's closed. Is it? Yeah, okay, this road's closed. So the car wants to turn right. Oh, we're gonna go here. Hopefully we can follow this car. So that was the turn lane. This would be really, ooh, that was close. <laughs> You'll probably be able to see it because the camera's in a much different spot. The car got very close to that curb, but that's also because that wasn't the turn that we should be doing. Um, we should have been in that turn lane, but it's closed. So it took kind of an awkward turn, the right one. Um, but wow, that was, uh, that was like this close to hitting that back right tire on the curb, which would have been very sad. Did a good job though, it didn't hit it. Um, handled the detour perfectly. Good job there, car. Um, also, I'll have fast forwarded through it, but you probably saw it, like I picked up my phone. I had to text somebody because we're running 15 minutes late to meet with them. Um, so obviously not good to use my phone. I understand that I shouldn't be, but it, it kind of does show you like, because we were stopped, I was able to have my phone in my hand and use it, which is still legal here in BC, but full self-driving won't uh, usually fault you while you're stopped and touching your phone. Not that I do it all the time, but it's as soon as you're moving, then it's a lot more strict. Like if we were moving and I tried to send that same text, it would have beeped at me and told me like, you have an object in your hand, um, attention monitoring unavailable. And same goes for like, if you're touching your screen and trying to change the music or anything, if you're at a stoplight, you're pretty much free and clear to spend as much time as you want touching the screen. But as soon as you're moving and you go to look at it, you kind of have to do like a one, two second, look back at the road, one, two second, treating it as though you were driving manually is the thing I will say. There you go. I was looking down at the phone to see the reply and just that little quick look down it gave me the alert to pay attention to the road which there are people who dislike that but honestly like that's what full self-driving needs to do it needs to be very very clear that this is not something to replace driver attention like as good as full self-driving is it can make mistakes so you need to basically be always looking at the road at all times just as though you're driving yourself manually um, for some people, they think that using FSD gives them the ability to use their phone or touch the screen to change things. It's like, you still can do those things, but you have to be right back and forth. Look at the screen, make a change, look back. Look at the screen, look back. But um, yeah. Anyways, uh, advanced green here. Hopefully we make it through. Yeah, good job. It's yellow, but turned yellow late enough that we should have gone through it. All right, so yeah, the bus is gonna pick up that person. This lane's closing, so I was curious if the bus was gonna have to come over, but they were stopping there. Um, here's some more construction. <clears throat> it looks like we're just gonna have to stay in our lane, which is fine. Yes, yeah, so this lane's ending, so I would signal right now and move over. Perfect, the car does exactly that. Yeah, construction zones, like, moving in and out of closed lanes. Honestly, it's been a long time since I've had an issue with full self-driving handling that. Like for the most part, assuming it's set up well with cones that are clear that a human would understand, the car has absolutely no issues um, moving between lanes if that means going into the wrong lane um, or anything like that. Like it's, it's not a problem at all, which is really cool to see the car handle those dynamic situations so well. 
we'll see coming up here we're not gonna have a lead car we're gonna have to make the choice to go over and I'm sure it'll be fine so we're in a 30 zone so the car is slowing down which it should and yet just moves over good and this is one of those scenarios where I'm not going to because people drive faster than 30 but if you thought you were going a little bit too fast in here the speed limit's 30 but the car's going 40 um, you could use the scroll wheel to uh, adjust the speed, the top speed, and bring it down so that the car was only going 30. But really good job here. Super smooth. There's no road lines, there's no markings, there's just cones and chaos, and the car handles it totally fine. All right, so we're almost here now. Um, I'm meeting a client at this McDonald's here, so it'll probably pull in fine, but it definitely won't um, park for us, but I'll try and get it close to a parking spot and just do an auto park to show it off. This is where, again, like I said at the beginning, a very small thing, but it's gonna be really cool to punch in a destination and get brought right to the McDonald's, for example, and then the car just park on its own without any driver input. like. I'm going to be doing so little this drive, so it's not a huge difference, but it's just those little touch points that make it feel so much more impressive. So I'm, I can't wait for version 13. It's going to be very cool. Um, anyways, we should turn right. Oh, I guess it's yeah, the next one. So we'll see what it'll do here. It's going to turn right. It doesn't look like the pin or the map is going left, but I'm hoping it turns left and right here. Yeah, okay, awesome. And then I may just have to take over to get us in front of a parking spot. Yeah. So I'm going to take over. Um, and I'll park us right here, actually. And auto park in this version has definitely gotten a lot more smooth. It can kind of do everything in one motion. So we'll see what it does here. It's a little close to this curb. Guess that's fine. Perfect. Great job. Uh, that's door to door. I drove for about 0.1 seconds there to come around the corner here to enable auto park, but otherwise drive handled entirely by the car. Um, it's got a quick thing to do here and then I will see you in a second.